Hi, in this video, I am going to show you how to create a responsive navigation menu using HTML and CSS. My name is Chris Mutuma from Ikich Programming. Let's begin. As you can see, I have my Visual Studio Code editor open and my web browser. On my Visual Studio Code editor, I have a sidebar where I have the files that I'm working with. I have the index.html which sits in responsive menu design folder and a style.css file as well. As you can see guys, I have already created this hamburger icon to save time by through use of SVG. Now the first thing that you're supposed to know is you're supposed to have a meta name viewport with a content which has a width, device width and initial, initial scale of 1.0, this part here. So without these guys, your website will not be responsive. So you have to make sure that you include that. I've also included a title and I've called it responsive menu design. And then I've linked my style sheet, which is style.css. Here it is. I have my style.css with the styles that I've created what you can see here right now. So the end goal guys, we want to create this kind of a menu. So that the moment I resize this, for example, if I'm on that view, uh, that is the width size, and then resize it, then the hamburger appears. And when I click on the hamburger, these menus appear here on top of each other. Then when I click on that again, the menus disappear. Okay. So we are going to start from the uh, from the smallest screen size to the to the biggest screen size, which is the desktop. So now, guys. I'll go back to my index.html here. I have a header, which is a container that contains all this inside of it. And we are going also to create the nav navigation menu inside the header. Then I have a label for Togo menu. Okay. So what this does is the for looks for an ID of our input type checkbox should match. So let me go quickly to my style.css here. And I'm going to comment out this display to none, save, then come back here. Now, this is what we are working on with right now. And again, guys, I even I forgot to mention that I'm using Visual Studio Code Live Server, as you can see, here. this is the Live Server extension that I'm using. All right, so now, the moment I click on this hamburger, because I've given a label, which now my hamburger falls under this label, everything goes inside the label. And the for Togo menu, which again, I've given an ID to my input as Togo menu. So the input is a checkbox, right? So the moment I click on this hamburger, the checkbox is checked. And the moment I click on it again, the checkbox is unchecked. So we are going to be using the checkbox idea here to be able to create our responsive menu when, so that when you click on that, it displays our menu and when you click and check it again, the, our menu disappears. So that's the idea behind it. Then guys, um, I have created a div tag. Okay, so this is what you can see this background here. This uh, nice cyan color background. And then I have created now the SVG. So I'm not expert of SVG, so I won't uh, dwell much on this, of which you can still use even a PNG. Uh, that has an hamburger menu icon or if you have, you have more expertise on SVG you can use so I'm going to explain here so this SVG I have given it a class hamburger all right so this class hamburger is what now I've used to style this hamburger menu icon to sit at the middle of this container then we have given it a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels then I have a G tag which defines now the format, or rather, the defines the stroke. It defines the fill if you want to, to to put a fill on your on your strokes, and then also the stroke line cap and and the, the stroke color. Then we have the path, which as a definition now this way we define now the lines. Okay, so we have a margin of ten pixels, that is left and right, and then we have a top bottom of ten pixels as well. Then we have a length of sixty. And then we give it a 10 here to make it a straight line, all right, so that it doesn't skew, so that it becomes a real straight line, as you can see. So that's the first line up there. Then the second line, the same, 
left and right 10 margin of 10 and then give it a 20 that is top so from the top here it is 20 pixels and then the length again is the same though you can change this if you wanted to have a smaller length like that so you can change so i'll leave it to see at 60 and then the third basically the same so and make sure that whatever that is on top and bottom is what you put the, on, on the far end to make sure that the lines are straight then i have my input here now the checkbox which is this one here so i've given it an idea of togo menu where now the label for togo menu looks for an idea of togo menu so that now you connect them or rather you link them together so when i click on that it checks and if i and, and I click on it again it unchecks i've given it a class togo so this is a class toggle that I've used here to hide it. So I'm going to hide it because we don't need to see this checkbox here, ideally. So I'll uncomment that and save, and it is gone. So now coming to my CSS here, the first things first is resetting your margin and padding. Okay, this is a reset. All right, then the body, I set a font family to Montserrat. Then I give a header with now, which is now this part here. So basically, Guys, I'll link a video on how to create a menu. Uh, this, uh, that is a menu bar, or rather a navigation menu, so that you can on the description, so that you can be able to follow and see how this part here is created. So the next thing now is for me now to to move on. Uh, this one now I need to to make sure that it is uncommented and save. Okay. So the next thing now is to create now the navigation menus. So after the input here, uh, enter twice and then start my nav, then my other list, then my list and anchor tag. So here inside the anchor tag, I'll have the normal home and then link an index.html reference here. So every time you click on this home, it will be reloading the home page. Then I'll copy it and paste three more times and I'll change this to an ash so this one to an ash and also this one to an ash the reason why I'm using the ash is to make sure that every time it is clicked it gives me this hash at the final of the URL until I include a page here okay and now since I don't have I'm not creating other pages I'll just leave it uh, with an hash home about and then that services then we got contacts so the moment i save that they appear there then now we are done with this part here and we go to, to the style now, CSS now and start with styling styling now by giving it a width of 100 percent then giving it a background color the same the blue violet here which is 8a2be2 all right so if i save that you can see the background or rather we create a background of our drop down so the same as what is here this this part here so that's what we are creating here then now the next thing is to style the nav an ordered list now you are so i'm going to align my text to center if i save that you can see the text goes to the center very nicely then i'll transform my text to uppercase uppercase then i'm also going to change the font size of the menu of the of the, uh, the links or rather the menu items and just 20 pixels is okay yes yeah, so you can see it have, we have increased the font and then that's the font size and then I'm going to display to display none so this one what happens is now the navigation menus, which is now our drop down, now that I, can, I can use that word, a drop down, it disappears. So I'm not going to use it this right now because I want us to work on these menus. Then we are going to uncomment it when we are done so that now we can be able now to have similar like this. Okay. So the next thing here is the now an ordered list list. So this we are going to target removing list tiles uh, to none. Okay. And then I give up. Of 20 pixels top and bottom and pixels left and right uh, you can see now you have created this padding in between so them they are, they are being uh, displayed nicely then we'll move on 
and start the nav and not at least list anchor so the first thing on the anchor we have to, to remove the text decoration that under that you can see and set it to none so you can see it's gone okay and then change the color of change the color of my my, my menu items and give them a color of white that is FFF. -F -F. so you can see now everything is coming into place and looking nice okay then now to do enough list list then anchor then hour. we over so if now somebody comes and overs on this this needs to change the color so then we are going to change the color change the color and now this color i'm going to use rgb that is red green blue then i'm going to give a red zero then i'm going to give a green of uh, 195 and i'm going to give a blue of 255 gives me a nice cyan color every time i over it will give me a nice cyan color so if i save that and i hope i can see it gives me that nice cyan color the same with, with what when i over on my hamburger menu icon color that appears so let's move on and do now our display to none this part here yeah because basically I'm, uh, we are done with styling that that goes so what next so the next thing is we need to make sure now our togo now which is this class here if it is checked so you have to use the pseudo element checked all right that is togo then checked you have to use the tilde symbol okay if now this checkbox is checked we want to target the nav and order that list. Nav, you are. Then say display and change that to block. And save. So if I click on that, now you can see it is working. If I, I click again, it unchecks. Okay, so far so good. Now we've created now a very nice uh, menu here, responsive menu. Now the next thing now we are going to do now, we are going to deal with now the responsiveness now right now we are on the menu that is the mobile device view so if i get to resize this window or even maximize it you still see that it is operating with this hamburger menu of which that should not be the case what we want is something like this now so if i minimize this and resize you can see at some point the menu that you're seeing here right now disappears and the hamburger menu appears okay so that's that's what we want to achieve with our menu here okay so now we use media queries and here when now you're coming from the mobile view to the desktop view you use minimum width but if we were coming from the desktop now to the mobile view we use max width so how do we write uh, media queries we write them an add symbol then media then screen then and then now our mean width of 700 okay so i'm just going to do a mean width of 700 pixels so if my width is less than 700 pixels that's when now this hamburger menu icon appears but if it is more than 700 pixels then we should have something like this so that's what we are targeting okay so now inside the media, media query i'm going now to target my label so this is a label because i gave it a container of label okay the svg goes inside the label now I need to make sure that I target this label and display display none. All right. So if I move anything beyond 700 pixels, you can see now my hamburger icon is, is gone. Okay. If I go back to anything less than 700 pixels, the hamburger appears. So the next thing we are going to, to look at here is the nav and ordered list. So this nav and ordered list, we are going to display inline block so because right now it's displayed block now we want them to align line up here okay so um let me let me 
reduce the size of my Visual Studio code a little bit so that we can be able to see the changes happen. So now we need now to display inline block. So they, they, they move next to each other, not on top of each other. Then line height gives the 60 pixels to center them on the container, that is the header. Okay, as you can see, now they have appeared, but now we are not done. Okay, so the next thing now, that, that is what now we are going to do that will change. Okay, so the next thing we are going to target here is the nav, an ordered list list. Now, here we are going to float our menu items to left. Okay, then we are going to give a padding, a padding of zero pixels, top and bottom and 10 pixels left and right. So you can see now, after doing that, after floating them to the left, they have been displayed in line, the one that we did here. Then I want to move them a little bit from the margin. So I'll do a margin left of about 10 pixels, at least to move them a little bit away from the margin. Then now the next thing now we are going to do is Whenever you come and hover here, you can see the pointer doesn't change to the, to, to the hand pointer. So I need to change that because when you hover on the menu item itself, the link, that's when the pointer changes, but I want it to be a block, okay? So that's why I'm going to, call, uh, to target my anchor tag, which holds the links. So, and then I'll display display block. So you can see now, if I move here, that changes. So that means if I'm here, I can just click and things change. If I'm here without just pointing on it, things change. Okay, so now if I maximize it completely, you can see now what we have. And if I minimize it, the hamburger menu appears because now we are targeting a minimum width of 700 pixels. So anything else that is above 700 pixels now, that's when now we display inline block. All right. So that is basically how to create a responsive navigation menu using HTML and CSS and use of the checkbox idea. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Like our videos if you like what uh, the content that we are putting out there. Thank you guys and see you in the next video.